Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about the Clostridium species type of bacteria. Now I must tell you that Clostridium species of bacteria is having the greatest clinical significance to human because this can cause a severe kind of diseases and all of this and most of the Clostridium species of bacteria uh, they can produce a very dangerous and uh, one of the most potent kind of toxin that is known to human being till now on planet earth and that is the botulism toxin right now this botulism toxin is also produced by a kind of uh, clostridium species and definitely all the other uh, species of clostridium can produce a kind of toxins they can produce a variety of toxins even uh, in case uh, some cases a single species of cl clostridium can produce more than 12 15 20 types of different toxin so that's making them this clostridium species very very dangerous and that's making us to read about them very carefully right now usually this clostridium species these are among the gram positive so these are among gram positive rods so let me write the first important point about the property these are gram positive gram positive rods and these are also anaerobic in nature so let me write anaerobic and anaerobic in nature so anaerobic means they won't require oxygen for their growth and development so they live without oxygen pretty fairly and not only they are anaerobic but they are uh, very much obligate for that so let me write they are obliged for so obligatory anaerobic obligatory anaerobic that means in this case they don't require oxygen for their growth and this case oxygen can act as oxygen act as poison poison for their growth that says poison for their growth so that's a very important point now why oxygen is acting as a poison because because this kind of bacteria like clostridium different species of clostridium they won't have a kind of enzyme to repair the damage by oxygen now oxygen can damage if you are wondering how oxygen can make possible damage you must know that oxygen can make a very dangerous kind of da health uh, damages in you and me also because oxygen can be converted into what we call super oxygen right or super oxide uh, radicals or free radicals now in this free radicals are the most dangerous kind of things that we know nowadays because this let's say this is the oxygen so it can convert into many different kind of uh, oxidase uh, what you can super oxide so it can convert into superoxide like that it can convert into uh, let's say hydrogen peroxide or make uh, the damage or also it can make the hydroxyl compounds in all these cases if one electron is taken by the oxygen so let me write here so it's all about taking up electrons so oxygen if it takes only one electron it can convert itself into what we know as superoxide now superoxide is a kind of free radical it can damage cell now if the oxygen is taking up two electrons then it can convert into hydrogen peroxide which can also damage via the uh, via, via kind of uh, oxidative damage right and if it is taking up three electrons from a source for example three electrons from a source sorry let me change it three electrons from a source then it can be trans transferred into hydroxyl hydroxyl uh, kind of molecule and in all this case in all the different kinds of molecules like superoxide hydrogen peroxide or hydroxyl all of them eventually eventually can degrade the bacterial cell so if this is the bacterial cell it can eventually be degraded by all these three factors so let me write by all these three factors okay so cellular damage can be obtain in any case it, it, it can be a cell bacterial cell or host cell whatever it can be damaged like that but now there are some bacteria uh, which can produce a kind of enzymes to go against uh, the production of all these free radicals so let me write that name here free radicals these are free radicals right so these are enzymes to go against them and some of the enzymes so let me note down the name some of the enzymes like catalase is there peroxidase is there for some bacteria 
they can produce this catalyst peroxidase which will revert back this situation because this catalyst peroxidase will further divide this free radicals for example catalase is a kind of scavenging molecule uh, enzyme and peroxidase can degrade this peroxide to prevent the damage by peroxide molecules and all these things right so some bacteria can produce them so those bacteria which can produce catalyst peroxidase can go against this kind of oxidative damage but as this clostridium species of bacteria they won't have these enzymes they are lacking this kind of enzyme so, so they lacking so, so they are lacking these enzymes as a result there is no way to repair the damage by these free radicals for that case only they won't leave uh, they are unable to live in the presence of oxygen so they will require no oxygen for their growth and oxygen is also acting as poison for their growth that's why we call them obligate anaerobes so they won't require a minimum trace of oxygen for their growth okay that's a very important point and they are gram uh, positive rods i've talked about and these rod shaped bacteria they are having a kind of blunt ended so let me write the kind of blunt ended blunt ended kind of bacteria okay and they can be cultured in blood agar so if you want to culture them in laboratory you can you can do that you can do that in blood agar so let me write culture in blood agar and the colony that they appear in the blood agar so let me write blood agar culture will provide you but the colony so let, let us let us let us come here let's say here this is the agar plate and let's say this is the blood agar right so let me change this to the red color thing here so if this is the blood agar here so we are going to see this colony like that so let me take a white color here now you can find colonies right like that colonies let's let's get it let's say so here we are going to see colonies like that so you're going to see colonies present red colored colonies surrounded by a white region or whitish region that's how uh, this colony looks like in blood agar slide slight appearance like that okay so this kind of appearance this is a typical appearance for them for uh, clostridium species right so it's a blood agar so let me write blood agar and these are the colonies that's how they look like and these organisms they are having spores or so they can form spores and they are also having flagella so let me write they have flagella so movement is always there and they are spore formers that's another important point they are spore formers so as they are spore formers so they can live up to certain level in the environment which is a dangerous which is a uh, what you can say altered environment for a longer period of time now the spores they usually produce is a kind of terminal spore that means so let me let me draw a spore so this is the clostridium you find something like that and spore will be inside so let's say yes so clostridium spore will look like this so these spores are simply what we know as terminal spore okay and the development of spore inside the vegetative cell can be the indication of uh, this kind of clostridium species kind of bacteria okay so there are different types of bacteria and i've told you that uh, most of the clostridium species bacteria can be dangerous to human being now usually this clostridium bacteria as they are anaerobic they are present in soil so let me write all of them in fact they present in soil so they present so present in soil as well as they can also be found in sewage they can also be found in sewage and contaminated waters in some cases but mostly they are present in soil and from this soil and sewage they can be transferred into human being now if they are transferred into human being there is a preferable place for them to stay and the place is intestine intestine otherwise rest of the regions of human body are uh, exposed to air so intestine is the only place which is not uh, pretty fairly exposed to air because that's why you have seen there are some kind of microorganisms which are micro aerophilic uh, tends to go inside intestine uh, right so in those case uh, in this case also this this clostridium species usually live in intestine 
and if, if it if, if it is infecting us right and there are some kind of uh, species so let me write down some name of the species which are of clinical significance so first of all so let me write clostridium so i just write c for the clostridium clostridium tetani clostridium tetani it causes the disease tetanus right it's a kind of shock condition and it's causing tetanus using a kind of toxin again so it's a kind of tetanus toxin so tetanus is a disease caused by clostridium tetani now the second kind of uh, species is clostridium perfringens it's a very common cause of foodborne infections perfringens okay so foodborne infection it causes so let me write foodborne infections or or let me write they can also cause what you can see as gas gangrene so let me write gas gangrene It's, it's can, it can cause gas gangrene and the third kind and the most dangerous kind among all this is clostridium botulinum or botulinum sorry botulinum now this clostridium botulinum this is causing botulism this is causing botulism in human being now this botulism is caused by again a toxin a kind of toxin and this toxin is called botulinum toxin and this toxin is known to be the most potent toxin known in planet earth or most so let me write most potent type of toxin known to earth known to human being the most potent kind of toxin now we will we'll be talking about this toxins and the mechanism of activity later but let's find that this is a very dangerous kind of toxin but nowadays we can use this toxin for our health benefits also and how we'll be seeing it later also okay so these are the major types of a species we'll be talking about clostridium and i hope that's helpful thank you